Hello everyone, and welcome to our second dev diary vlog about Dead Cells thing that we're doing here. Uh, basically today we wanted to talk about procedural generation. Uh, so we're actually going to take a bit of a deep dive into it. It might get a little long, a little technical, so, you know, grab a cup of tea. Some cushions, you know, in case you fall asleep halfway through. My boring old boys. But the reason we want to do this is because this is by far the main concern raised by the community uh, regarding basically the, the potential quality of the, the finished product. So that's why we decided to talk about it today. Okay, so for us, procedural generation is really useful for sort of three big reasons. Um, firstly, we can just create more content than we could ever do if we had to hand design everything. You know, it's just way easier. <laughs> Second, you know, the procedural generation really allows us to sort of change the orientation uh, of the difficulty of the gameplay. So instead of, you know, getting you to, to rote learn a level, okay, this guy's here, this guy's here, you got a dodge him, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's really going to pay to to have good reflexes and, and, and reward your instincts as you run through. Each time it's going to be different, so you have to adapt to that new situation. Last and obviously not least, uh, it brings a lot of replay value. So, I mean, you're going to be able to run through a Metroidvania and each time discover a sort of new area and have a different challenge, which is something that you don't usually get in this kind of genre. Now... Unfortunately, the problem, as a lot of you know, with relying on procedural generation too much is it can often lead to bland level design, you know, feeling a bit messy and inconsistent, or the old uh, shit run syndrome. So we feel like a good example of a nice middle ground between fully handmade and, and fully procedural would be Spelunky. Um, their approach, you know, sort of really allowed them to get that consistent feeling whilst uh, providing tons of diversity, you know, each time you run through it's completely different. So we wanted to take a similar sort of approach for Dead Cells. So in practice, that means that some of the level design is going to be fixed and handmade, uh, and that's going to act like a, a framework for us to insert the randomly generated or the procedurally generated part. So so that makes a little bit more sense for you guys, uh, I'm going to show you the software that we're using uh, to represent the level design uh, in the game. And, and so what you're seeing on the screen, these are sort of random variants of our ossuary biome, it's one of the levels. Um, and, and as the game is procedurally generated, the, the structure is, is never the same, you see. Uh, but there's also some, as I mentioned, handmade and, and fixed elements. So for example, uh, in this case, the, the, the map that you're looking at, that's the island of the, like, the whole world of Dead Cells, and that's, that's fixed. That's uh, how the biomes are interconnected, the connections between them, what you need to unlock, that, that always stays the same. And then the next part that, that's fixed and hand-designed are actually the insides of the levels. Uh, so we're, what we're calling tiles or chunks of levels. Uh, so in practice, it's a, it's a small part of platforms that are designed for a specific purpose. You know, so it might be fighting, we might be setting up sort of dodging traps or, or putting in some treasure or whatever we need for in, in a particular area. And each one of these little tiles uh, is actually designed uniquely for the, the level or the biome that it's going to be featured in. So for example, the sewers are going to be small and tight, and you're not going to be able to jump around. Whereas the ossuary might be a lot more open and give you a lot more room to move. The idea is obviously to give each biome its, its own sort of strong identity so that you know, okay, this is a new level. So once we've got these little chunks uh, of levels prepared, uh, basically we need to organize them into sort of some kind of logical, interesting way. And so we come back to the first uh, bit of software that we showed you. Um, and you can see uh, this sort of concept of graph. So each level has a, a graph that represents uh, the, how a sort of a set of instructions for the procedural generation algorithm. And so that's going to include information like the length of the level, the layout of the room, uh, the distance between the entrance and the exits, uh, the number of treasures, all that kind of stuff. So each biome has its own specific sort of hand design graph. Um, and so the, that really goes again to re reinforcing that feeling of identity for each biome. So, for instance, in the sewers, uh, a lot of the, the small tiles are going to have labyrinth sort of patterns. Uh, they're going to be really tight. But there are also going to be a fair few of them, so that's going to give the biome a sprawling structure. Uh, so no matter which variation of the chunks is loaded, you're always going to have that impression of being a little bit lost. So on the other hand, uh, the ramparts, for example, are always going to be more linear, straightforward and open. Okay, so once we've got all of those elements, individual tile chunks, uh, biome level graphs, and the overall outlay of the world, then we can let, finally, the procedural generation sort of do its job which is just to randomly, randomly assemble those chunks. Um, so as you can see, it's 
procedural generation with a good dose of hand design over the top of it. So that's a pretty sort of broad overview of how we do it. Um, hope it sort of reassured you about any doubts you might have had about the level design and the quality of what we're doing. Uh, we're paying a lot of attention to that. Uh, so as always, uh, we'd love to have your feedback uh, and answer any of your questions if you've got some. Uh, there's also a written version of this uh, vlog. That's uh, The link is available in the description. So yeah, hit us up in the comments. Hit us up on the Steam Community Hub or something, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Take care, and I'll see you next time.